Please stand for the reading of God's word. Hebrews 4, 1 through 13. God's promise of entering his rest still stands, so we ought to tremble with fear that some of you might fail to experience it. For this good news that God has prepared this rest has been announced to us just as it was to them. But it did them no good because they didn't share the faith of those who listened to God. For only we who believe can enter his rest. As for others, God said, in my anger I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest, even though this rest had been ready since he made the world. We know it is ready because of the place in the scriptures where it mentions the seventh day. On the seventh day, God rested from all his work. But in the other passage, God said, they will never enter my place of rest. So God's rest is there for people to enter, but those who first heard this good news failed to enter because they disobeyed God. So God set another time for entering his rest, and that time is today. God announced this through David much later in the words already quoted, today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Now if Joshua had succeeded in giving them this rest, God would not have spoken about another day of rest still to come. So there is special rest still waiting for the people of God, for all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors, just as God did after creating the world. So let us do to our best to, under, to enter that rest. But if we disobey God as the people of Israel did, we will fail. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one to whom we are accountable. You may be seated. Well, it's good to be with you. My name is Pastor Ruby. I hang out with our youth on Sunday mornings, and so it's good to have a chance to speak God's word this morning. I would love to open up in a word of prayer and then we will get started. Father God, we come to you today in worship. We thank you, God, for your good works, and God, that you offer rest through Christ Jesus. Father, we ask that your spirit would come today, that it would open our hearts to your word and speak to us. God, your word says that your words are living and active. That, God, you breathe life into us. So, God, as we study this passage today, it is our prayer that these words would not just inform us, but they would transform our hearts and lives. May we rest in you today. Amen. It's good to be here today. Pastor Keith is on vacation um, with his family today. He'll be back tomorrow. Um, and he asked me to step in and preach Hebrews 4, 1 through 13. Um, we've been spending the last several weeks in Hebrews and will continue in the next several months. This series is focusing on this call of, to be greater, to be stronger, and to be better through Christ. As many of you guys know, my year has been quite a year. We've gone through a lot of transitions in student ministries. Um, we began the year with our high school pastor transitioning to seminary, and um, we had the, the opportunity and privilege to work together for eight years. Um, and then we entered into our brand new student center building, um, and it's been a joy uh, to worship in that space. And um, right now we're in the midst of some great transition as we're looking to hire a middle school director. Um, so I get the joy of serving in both middle school and high school ministries. Um, I kind of chuckled <laughs> as I was writing this down. I was kind of exhausted just kind of listing and looking back at the year like, whoa, that's a lot. <laughs> but God has been good. He's been gracious. And he has done amazing things in our students and our leaders and our families' lives. Um, and so I give thanks. Oftentimes when people ask me, so how are you? <laughs> how are you doing? My answer is tired, busy, and I could use a nap. How many of you guys can relate to that? 
Yes, <laughs> I see a lot of hands. Um, God wants to work through our lives. He calls us to rest in him. Um, I love this passage in Hebrews 4. It's not just a wonderful passage, but it's a warning to us as believers. Um, as we look through this passage, the writer of Hebrews is writing to a congregation that is wrestling, that is utterly exhausted and wanting to give up. This is 30 years after the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus, and this message is calling us to enter into God's rest. Um, we need rest. We need it. We know we need rest, but we don't always surrender to it. We fight it and say, oh, but I just have to finish this one more thing. Or we get distracted because our attention gets pulled in another direction. Um, this passage is reminding us that it's not just this call to physically rest, but to spiritually rest as well. In verse 1 and 2, it reminds us to enter his rest, that that command, that beautiful benefit of following Christ still stands, but that we should fear and tremble in those times that we don't experience his rest, where we miss out on the glorious moments that we rest with the Lord. We have been given the good news. Think about this in Psalm 34, 8. It says, taste and see the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. God has prepared a time of rest for us. Are we ready to enter into it? I want to remind us today that if we don't rest now, we won't rest later. The Jewish Christians were receiving this letter, and they were on the verge of turning away from the promised rest. And just like the people in Moses' day who had turned back from the promised land. How many of you are facing challenges, are feeling overwhelmed by all the things that you might have to do today or this coming week? Um, it bogs us down. We get flooded with things that need our attention or those things that we want to put our attention to. When we're in those moments, we think that we have to follow our desire and our need to get things done. But remember today through this passage that God, God's promise is bigger than that. He has the potential to fulfill and to guide us, but he calls us to surrender, to carve out space and time to fully rest in his promises. Um, we live in a day and age where we have so many things coming at us. I was thinking about um, this last week as I was working with our middle schoolers. We were talking about creating a timeline of all the things that fill our day. And as we're walking through it, we're talking about we need maybe six to eight hours of sleep, and then our students go to school, they come home, they have a snack maybe, and then hang out with friends, do homework. Maybe they have sports going on or a club or church. And then they come home, they grab dinner, finish some more homework, go to bed and start their day all over again. Um, I laughed at that schedule because I was like, oh, I can totally relate to that, where your day gets so packed with things, even in those times where we're supposed to rest, our phone goes off, or we need to check one more email, or watch that show <laughs> on TV, and we, we squeeze God out of it. Um, he wants our all. He wants to be our, our all, our center. A whole generation of Israelites died in the wilderness, and they missed out on the earthly canon. They had the good news proclaimed to them, but it didn't assure the attainment of that goal. 
Just because we know something is important and valuable, it doesn't mean that we always do it. Think about that for a second. Just because we know something is good and valuable, we don't always do it. Why? The good news was proclaimed. Are we listening? We can be a part of a group of people that love Jesus, but are we united in faith? We can be here at worship on Sunday mornings, but are we all in? Are we resting in the goodness of God? We can show up, we can give, we can attend all different programs and clubs and life groups, but God wants our hearts, he wants our minds, he wants our bodies to be present with him. Um, God had a promise to deliver us to the promised land and that we would be a kingdom of priests, a holy nation, if we would just obey and keep his commandments. This is a warning to not miss the boat. So how do we become people who rest now? Well, I want us to look at verse 3 where it reminds us that we're called to believe, to be people who truly believe because it is the necessity of faith. It's about an attitude. It's about trusting God wholeheartedly, obeying his voice and keeping his covenant. God doesn't want us to be just people who hear his word, but he wants us to follow through and be persistent in our faith, our faith that God is greater, stronger, and better. We have an opportunity today as we read this passage to respond to what God has done in our lives and what he wants for us. Um, Another way that we do this is following his example. If you look at Psalm 95, um, 8 through 11, let me read it for you. It says, the Lord says, don't harden your hearts as Israel did at Meribah as they did at Manasseh in the wilderness. For there, for there your ancestors tested and tried my patience, even though they saw everything I did. For 40 years I was angry with them, and I said, they are a people whose hearts turn away from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. So in my anger I took an oath, they will never enter my place of rest. He provides this place, yet the people in Israel have a hardened heart. Their focus is on something else. And they have the gospel proclaimed to them. They have a servant of God that is ministering alongside them, yet they miss it. It's a good reminder to us to not follow the things of this world that grab our attention, but are we following God? Are we resting in him? In Genesis 2, 2, as was read today, we are reminded that the Lord created everything on this earth, and on the seventh day, he rested. He took that Sabbath rest. It wasn't because he was idle, because he was lazy, because he was physically tired, but because his work was complete. It was good. He reminds us through that passage that we are to remember the Sabbath rest, that we are called to keep it holy. When we think about the Sabbath rest, do we do those things? The wilderness generation of Israel failed to enter, not because the rest of God was not available. It was available from the beginning of creation. So why don't we grab a hold of it? Sabbath is a joy. It's a privilege. It's a great value. Um, God wants us to step out in faith and grab a hold of it. Why is it important? Well, I want to tell us that and remind us that rest defines who we are as God's people. It's this reminder that we are no longer slaves to this world. We weren't designed to work seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We are called to rest and to bask in the fact that we are called his sons and daughters. We are made in his image. 
He wants to give us freedom. That the things of this world are nothing compared to what he has in store for us today and for the days to come. We get so busy that we become a slave to the things of our everyday, and we miss out. I don't know about you, but when I'm not focusing on the Sabbath rest, it impacts everything else in my life. I grow tired, exhausted. Sometimes it impacts me mentally where I'm just bitter or cranky. Um, And I want to remind us that if we're not focusing on the Sabbath rest, it impacts everything else as well. I know for me, in those times where I'm exhausted, I tend to isolate myself and pull myself away from community, but I also fill myself with meaningless things just because I'm exhausted and don't want to pay attention. That's not the life that God is talking about through his word. He wants to give us freedom and joy and resting in his goodness. Um, It's important to rest because God rested. He sat there and was completely satisfied that his finished work was good. This is not a law or a command, but it's a benefit to us to rest in him. So why do we avoid it? We avoid it because we're disobedient people. Um, I remember when As a little girl, my mom telling me I should go to bed. And that struggle with my mom and saying, I don't want to go to bed. (laughs) I have to read this book. Or I just want to stay and watch this TV show. And my mom just kept telling me, Ruby, you've got to go to bed. You've got to get this rest so that you can start a whole new day tomorrow. Um, We act like those children right? At that, that moment where we're called to do something, but we fight it. And we think other things will make us happy or complete us, but we are called to, to follow and cling to Jesus, cling to his love, cling to the fact that we are forgiven people and that he gives us new life. Oftentimes, as Christians, we go through the paces of knowing this, but it's the living that gets really difficult. We become passive. Sometimes we make excuses that we have to get these things done or to live a good life, we've got to be successful and we've got to put in this many hours and prove ourselves. I run into those lies a lot, and I want to remind myself and us that God is enough. And when we rest in him, we realize it. Oh, I forgot. So we need to be people of the word. We need to be remembering um, his goodness. In Psalm 95, it reminds us that God does not want our hearts to be hardened. He doesn't want us to refuse to enter the rest. He doesn't want us to pretend that we are our own gods, our own saviors. But as David talks about in the Psalms, that He wants us to be people that are hearers of the word, but also that we focus on today, that we have an opportunity allotted to us to come and to rest in God's goodness. Um, Don't treat this message lightly. This is a huge warning to us that when we don't follow after God, our hearts get hardened. We get off track and miss the goal um, that he has set before us. Um, The last part is that if we don't rest now, we won't rest later. We learn through scripture that the story is not over yet, that what we live here and now is not the big picture, but we have the opportunity to be united with God again in heaven. He calls us in Hebrews at the very end, if you turn with me to Hebrews 4. Let me grab it. He says this, 
So let's do our best to enter that rest. But if we disobey God as the people of Israel did, we will fall. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all of creation can be hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. He is the one to whom we are to be accountable. There will come a time in our lives where we have to hold account to the life that God has given us. How are we using it? Are we using it to honor and glorify his name? I want to encourage you with a passage in Philippians 4, 6 through 7. It says this, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is a reminder that God cares about what is going on in our lives and what grabs our attention. And he wants us to come to him. In Matthew 11, it talks about, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. If we don't rest today, we won't rest tomorrow. It is important that we focus on the fact that God is a good and gracious God. When we rest in him, he reminds us of this overwhelming gift of grace and peace. So I want us to to reflect for a moment and think about this. Are you resting? What does Sabbath rest look like to you? And what does it say about your view of God? Thinking about these words this week, and when I get so distracted and bogged that I can't make space or time to rest in God, I'm limiting him. I'm putting him in this box and saying, God, you can only accomplish this much. But we learn from the very beginning that his work is finished and complete and good. So why don't we rest in that? I want us to think about that for a second as we um, come to the end of this time. What does your Sabbath rest look like? And how does that impact your view of God? Would you pray with me? Thank you, Jesus, for being a God of such grace and peace to us. Thank you for giving us the privilege of coming before you, a God who is worthy of our praise. And so, God, we come before you today as we read your word. God, this reminder of those times where we have gotten off track. God, we've wandered. We fill our time with things that may be good and at times meaningless. And God, we want to have more of you in our lives. So God, as we continue in this time of worship, would you speak to us of this call to Sabbath rest, this time to to keep holy and to observe your goodness and, God, what you have accomplished in and through us. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for being a God who is always present, always there, even when we've gone astray. We love you, Lord, and we we just pray that these words would transform our hearts and minds. Help us to be more like you. Amen.